Sabah al khair. Right now we're going to talk about a special set of verbs that we call rather poetically kana and its sisters, or in Arabic kana wa akhawadha. All of these are verbs that mark the time or duration of actions, events, or states. Some of them you probably recognize, right? Kana to be, asbaha to become, mazala to still be or to still keep doing something. I've listed them here. There are approximately 12, depending on the source you consult. Some of them are quite rare, quite archaic even, and unless you go digging around very, very old books, old poetry, you're unlikely to encounter them in modern usage, but I've included them all just so no one ever tells you that they don't exist. They function essentially like other verbs, uh, but in Arabic there are a couple of major differences. One, we use a special set of terms to describe the grammar around them in the sentence. Two, their direct objects, if they have direct objects, take a special case ending. And three, they can be used with mudar a marfu'a, a conjugated present tense verb, to convey the timing of a state or an action with another helping verb. So, let's take a look at some examples. First, as you know, in a jumla ismiya, a regular nominative nonverbal sentence, we use two words to talk about the subject and the predicate. If I said the boy is short, al walad qasir. Al-walad is my subject, my beginning, my mubtada. And then qasir is the news, the payoff, the predicate, or what we call in Arabic al-khabar. Now, suppose that I wanted to say the same thing only in the past. The boy was short, he grew up and got taller. But what we want to say is the boy was short. So I'm going to use the verb for being in the past. I'm going to say kana. And now instead of mubtada and khabar, I use a slightly different, more specific set of terminology. Since the whole sentence is now being affected by kana, al-walad is now called ismi kana. sort of like the noun of kana. And then qasir, the end of the predicate, is specifically called khabar kana. So in terms of what we've done with sentence structure, not really much has changed. But in Arabic, we need to know to refer to it by a second set of forms. The other thing that, excuse me, a second set of terminologies, right? But the form stays pretty much the same. Here, qasir is almost like the object of kana. Kana is a verb, and so direct objects for all verbs in Arabic need to take a special case ending, that mansub case ending. So since this is an indefinite noun, I'm going to add fathat tanwin. Kana al-walad qasiran. We probably aren't going to hear that ending in speech, but we might see it if we were reading it uh, in a book or a newspaper article in a more formal, less colloquial context. If we wanted to say instead the boy is not short, the terminology would remain pretty much the same and the rules would stay the same, but instead of kana, we could negate this with laysa, the boy is not short. And then instead of saying ism kana and khabar kana, we would refer to these specifically as ism laisa and khabar laisa. But the process and the ideas remain essentially the same. Let's look at another example. If we wanted to say, since we're talking about children and their relative heights, the, the girl got tall, the girl became tall. Maybe she was short, now she got tall. 
I would take my verb for becoming or turning into something and say asbahat. Elbint. Tawila. Asbahat. Because bint is feminine, we're talking about a girl here. And then because we need that mansub ending and tawila is indefinite, I would say tawila ten. But I wouldn't have an alif because I have a tamarbuta to mark the feminine ending for the girl. So in a case like this, al bint would be ism asbaha, the subject, the noun of asbaha, our sentence, or excuse me, our verb that is sort of the main action in the sentence. And then tawila would be khabar. Asbaha. We probably wouldn't refer to it as ism asbahat because we refer to the verbs in their masculine past tense form. That's just how it tends to be done. To have said so as well, since these nouns, the boy and the girl, al bint and al walad, are the subjects in formal Arabic, if we were voweling, if we were doing all of the case endings, the i'rab, al walad, would be marfu'a with a tamma, as would al bint. We have separate videos on what the case endings are in Arabic and how we use them in individual sentences. So if you haven't studied this yet, don't worry. It's coming down the road for you soon. But if you're curious or if you need a refresher, you can go look at our videos on i'rab, case endings in Arabic, and the marfu'a endings and the mansub endings. The other thing that kana wa akhawatiha can do for us is talk about actions happening, specifically not just states of being, the boy is not short or the girl became tall, but things that people were doing or are still doing, we can sort of give a little more information about the time frame and the state of being while the action was happening. So if I want to say my friend was studying in her room, I would say كانت صديقتي تدرس في غرفتها Here I have كان, my verb, and then صديقتي is going to be اسم كان Ah, but here I don't have a noun or an adjective, a direct object, I have instead a whole jumla fa'liya, a verbal sentence, which is considered khabar kana. So I don't need a noun there, and I don't have to worry about the i'rab, these case endings, because I have a verb and it's going to take its own case ending in formal Arabic that has its own rules. But this would mean my friend was studying, kind of a past continuous sense. My friend was studying in her room. Uh, one final example, if I wanted to say, my friend is still living in Amman, then I would take this verb for still being, and I would say, uh, let's make it a male friend this time. ما زال صديقي يسكن في عمان. So here we have ما زال 
our verb that's sort of situating things in time. The friend is still. Sadiqi would be ismazala. And then here again, we have a jumla fa'liya, a sentence that begins with a verb. So this mazala is kind of situating this verb more specifically in time. My friend is still living in Amman. And then that jumla fa'liya, that verbal sentence, would be the khabar of mazala.